Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking about nine window cleaning tips. And no, I don't do tips when it comes to tools, but that's what I'm doing today. So if you're listening to this or checking it out, hopefully you enjoy it, but stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up, y'all? If you are just finding the show, thanks. This show's been going on for, uh, gosh, seven years. I've been a window cleaner for like 16 plus years, had my company. I am now rep with windowcleaner.com, and this is what I do. Try to help people who are starting companies or uh, have companies or any of that. I'm a nerd, so that's what I do. So hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully it is better than a cat video. Most cat videos. Some of them are pretty darn good. But anyway, today, that's what I'm talking about. Normally, I don't go into gear. That's kind of more like Steve-O's world. He does the gear side. I do the business side. But I had a kind of an interesting idea. By the way, if you guys ever have ideas for shows, send me a text. Let me know. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. I'll do a shameless plug later and give you that number again. But... I wanted to do some tips, some things that I've found through the years that are like little hacks that work with gear that maybe it will help you. And, you know, I know thousands of you tune into this to have little bits of uh, business information, but I thought this would be a fun one. And, you know, the longer you do something, the more you find these little things that work, that kind of actually help you and they're not traditional things a lot of times we get people who like call a message let us know and they're like hey like you know what am i doing with this thing like how am i supposed to uh uh do this what tool is there and it's like well it's not really a tool but there's ways you can do it so let's just jump in and i'm gonna start with something that i think everybody knows if you're not you may not be doing this but you're Huck towels, your detail towels, your uh, scrubber sleeves, your anything that touches glass that you wash, do not wash with a soap, a detergent, a fabric softener, don't put bounce sheets in there, nothing. Hot water, dry, that's it. And if it's microfiber, if you can dry without heat, even better. But if you put soap into something like that, you are going to be leaving little weird cloudy marks every time you detail. And sometimes more than others, sometimes it washes out pretty well. But if you can smell anything like a detergent, that means something is in that and it's being left on there and that will get back on the glass. So if you've ever chased these weird smear lines or marks and you're like, what the heck is going on? There's a fill. It's actually from your towel or your sleeve. More likely your towel because your towel is still dry. So don't wash them with anything. And people go, well, how do you get them clean? Well, it's just dirt that's on there. You don't have to use anything. Hot water will pull it right out just like it did the water and soap out of the window. Soap is just an encapsulator. Now it's in there. Guess where the soap and the dirt went in your sleeve? So when you wash them, you're actually going to have soap already in them, which is what you're using for your windows, which you know doesn't streak, and you can pull it out. Something interesting to think about. I also say, every time somebody does that and they're like, I'm getting these streaks or smart marks or whatever in their towels, they're trying to find a better towel. Like, oh, well, these ones do it and these ones don't. Some fabrics hold that a little bit different. And there are some solutions out there, detergents that I know have less of a chance to do that, but why risk it? The only time that I'll do anything is if uh, the guys ever left which has happened and it's awful, but you know, if you got a big basket of dirty wet towels and you leave them in a truck over a weekend or something and you're like, oh, I forgot to take them out and they smell absolutely horrible, that I'll, I'll do it once with uh, some soaps and then the next time I'll wash it right after that, after that cycle's done with just water, kind of rinse that out a little bit. Uh, it's not always perfect, but sometimes it happens. B by the way, if you're new to window cleaning, there is no worse smell that like gets into your brain than the like dusty mold smell of stanky towels. Uh, it is something to truly remember. It's like, you know, if you've ever smelled like a dead animal, you remember that smell, it, it's towels are the same way. 
I swear. Um, but that's a great one. A lot of people don't do that, and um, and it may not always happen. A lot of people are like, I wash them with detergent and never had the problem. Well, you may have not seen it, or maybe you haven't had the problem yet, but you could. So don't do it. Um, another tip that I really like that uh, has really changed the game for us um, was foam on Frenchies. So like people are like, oh, I want a six inch squeegee. Like I got French windows, oh, the insides, outsides of water feed, everything float right over the, the frames and you're golden. Actually one of the highest paid hourly window cleaning jobs that we did uh, monthly was a cut up job. And it was because uh, it was just water fed over it and the customer was extremely happy. Uh, it was like one person an hour for 800 bucks, but we did them all the time every month and it was just because they couldn't do it any other way. It was like a big, big house and it would have taken them like two days to do the window. So, But on the insides, don't try to scrub with a little six inch and squeegee with a little six inch because remember the timing on a window comes from detailing. That's wiping the edges. And there's so many of them. So after you squeegee, you're going to spend three times longer just trying to detail all that water off. But instead, use foam and a hawk towel. Go tss, just a little bit. Buff it out. Tss, buff it. Tss. It'll be a hundred times faster. That's not technically right. Probably only 72 times faster. Uh, but it's super fast. Foam sticks to the windows. You're not getting it behind there. It's just really, really speeds it up. If you want a small squeegee for like littler windows and maneuvering, fine. But you're still worried about detailing. So if you have a lot of French windows, that's a really, really big one. Um, louvers, which most people, thank goodness, aren't running into. They're still big in Hawaii. But uh, louvers are kind of in the same situation. There's tools to do both sides, but yet you're still detailing, trying to get in the sides. And then when you close everything, as soon as they touch, if there's water, it transfers. And same thing. Foam can be your friend. Uh, it has a chemically smell. And some people really like that. When you leave their house, they're like, oh, it smells so clean. You know, like when you do house washes and it smells like a pool. I'm like, hey, just so you know, your house is going to smell a little bit like a doctor's office. It's because of how we treat it. But don't worry, that will dissipate. People like that. They think it's clean. So foam and hawk towel. And if you haven't used foam or you're not using foam yet, it's spray foam. We carry it. Uh, Sprayway is pretty much the stuff we use, but it's kind of all the same. Uh, and it's super cheap. It's like five bucks a can, six bucks a can. So super cheap, super easy to do, and definitely worth looking into. So foam, hawk for Frenchies. Yeah. Um, another one that people don't necessarily, it's very common, people know, but a lot of people don't know you can use it, is steel wool, four zero, so zero, 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 steel wool can be used on windows. It is great to use dry on windows. If it's wet, obviously after the job, you're going to throw it away. If there's any spotting or anything, you don't want it to, to rust. Rust is harder than glass and will scratch. But it's really, really good. Think about it. Like steel wool, I could rip a half a pillow, which is what we use on a job. We rip it, fold it, because there's like these weird, like, you know, things come on. Fold it, put it in your pouch. Every job, every person has uh, a razor with them, but they also have foam and they, or um, steel wool. And they'll use the steel wool on everything. Because when you're done cleaning a window, if there's anything left on the glass, Pop that steel wool out once it's dry, detailed and everything. Just hit it. A couple buffs, it's gone. People always say, well, yeah, but it leaves little little pieces on there. It can, yeah. But, I mean, just don't leave them on there. And one thing to worry about, sort of, see, is like a bonus one that I'm just thinking of, is that with steel wool, if you do leave any fibers on there, in the dew or anything, you'll get these little rust-like things. So make sure that if you're using that, uh, obviously, in a little buffs, you're not going to have tons of it, but just, you know, blow it off as you're kind of going, phew, make sure it's not there. Wipe it with your towel, something so that you don't leave as many on there. Um, if you're really hitting it hard and it's breaking and like a bunch of pieces, you're going to have some pretty noticeable rust. Uh, but it's very, very rare if you're just doing it typically in light. Uh, steel wool is good. It is got to be 4-0. 
And um, if there's any discoloration, you got to get rid of it. Like if you're a nerd like me, there is a hardness scale tells you what can scratch glass and rust will, but steel in the thinness will not in a 4-0. And by the way, if you want to know why razors don't scratch glass, well, they do, man. I scratched them. Hold on. The razor blade will not scratch glass because the razor, tip of a razor, is softer than the glass. And you cannot scratch or damage or cut or anything. Something softer, hard. You can't take a banana and cut wood no matter what you do. That is what razors do. So, fun fun fact. Same thing in steel wool. It's thin enough at a 4-0 that it doesn't scratch. Now, bronze wool was amazing because it was in an ultra fine, which they do not make anymore. The bronze wool, if you see any stuff out there, they still do make a fine grade, and that will scratch glass. Not maybe on every window, but it does scratch glass. I've seen that, done it. We've tested tons of people and companies across the country world that have said, oh yeah, our grade is ultra fine, and it's not. There was one machine that did it. It's gone down during COVID and hasn't been back since. So be careful if you're using bronze wool. But that was great. Same softness, but it didn't rust. So that's why you found it with a lot of uh, water fed. So super nice. But anyway, I digress. Steel wool's good. It's got to be 4-0. Another thing that I always like to have if you're doing resis inside at all is a toothbrush. A toothbrush fits in a channel. You know, so all your bucket on a belts always have like two spots for channels. And we personally didn't carry two channels for pretty much anything. It's nine o'clock. So one of those slots always had a toothbrush in it. And a dry toothbrush on a dry window does great for tracks. Any little gap in there where you're trying to get the towel in, all you do is with the toothbrush, turns it into like the powder, you can wipe it right out. Super easy. Dirt is easier to get out of a track than mud. Dirt is easier to clean than mud. So always do your tracks first before your window. And you will save yourself so much headaches because you're not wiping mud, you're wiping dirt. And when you're all done doing the window, some of it drips, you're going to wipe it again for a second time and that last bit gets any residue of the dirt out. So remember the staging and how you do that. Always do your tracks while they're dry and you will save yourself so much headaches. And sometimes you forget, you get into it. Heavy cleaning the tracks is something different. That's a toothbrush and a vacuum, which gets me to this next kind of tip. And if you are a tool guy, or if you haven't, don't have any power tools, find a brand that you like and has a lot of options and get the vac with that brand. So we were DeWalt guys, that's kind of my tool of choice. And all of our vacs on our trucks were DeWalt. And the nice thing is, is when they come back at the end of the day, all the trucks, pull the batteries, put them on the chargers. Next day, when they get everything ready, they grab their buckets, grab a charger, put it on the vac, and they're out. They always have a vacuum that's always quiet. You don't have to plug it in. It's small, it's portable, and if you're doing heavy cleaning and tracks, sills, I can pull that little vac out, suck it up, and it's great. But remember, a toothbrush will always work with a vac. You always do that first and hit it with the vac. You want to loosen the dirt, turns it into kind of like a powder, but doesn't get it all caked in there. And toothbrush is great. There are track brushes. We sell them. Those work too. But whatever your uh, poison is for the brush, do that while it's dry. Suck it up while it's dry. Clean the window, and then you can wipe it again for the final one. And you will have perfect tracks. Perfect. If they're triple tracks... And they're like super deep and super gross, like we charge extra. We charge extra for that, just we do. Because we know it's gonna take more time. It's the same thing on anything. You're paying us for our time. What we do in that time depends on what you're paying us for. So toothbrush, little DeWalt vac, perfect. Don't overthink the vac. So many people are like, is this a good, they're like all good. All you're doing is sucking up a fine dust and any vac will do that. So stick to the batteries that you guys already have and you're perfect. One other thing too is if you're going to go with, say, DeWalt, they have a battery that is called a Power Stack, I believe, which is like a battery that's a little bit lighter, but it holds two times the charge kind of in the size, and it's fast, super rapid. One of those batteries will last you all day. Pretty much any battery, once they're new, will last you all day anyway, but if you're really using it, it's really 
not good to have a battery die halfway through a job. So something to think about. Um, by the way, I'm ripping these off super fast. So if you're listening, working, hopefully you're out there making a million bucks. But I got to do our shameless plug, and that's me. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It is literally what I do. If you didn't know, now you know. And uh, I would love to be your rep. And all that means is you got somebody who can help you with questions, with bids, with anything. That's like literally I want to be your asset. I want to be a resource for you. And in return, the only thing that I ask, and it's a simple ask, is that I get to put your orders in. And all that means is if you're shopping, put it in your cart. If you're uh, logged in, just click save this cart. It's right in the checkout, right above the checkout buttons. It's just to save this cart. Literally just click that and shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. Save it under Jersey and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Pull the trigger. And it's literally that simple. And all I do is I'll verify the address with you. Usually kind of check things. If there's any like big questions, I'll bring them up. And I'll be like, hey, cool. Are you still at one, two, three? And anything else you need to add? No? Cool. Awesome. Here's your total. I can take a card, save even a card for you. And it's just that simple. I always will verify your card. A lot of you who order with me all the time, um, once you get, you know, one, two orders in that kind of rotations in, is literally like, sweet man, awesome. I see you. I'll send it to one, two, three, fake street. Thank you. It's that easy. There's nothing else to it. I get credit for it and it costs you nothing extra, not a penny more to have me, <laughs> so sad, but to have me in your back pocket, not in a creepy way, but in the way that you can bounce questions off me, ask me anything, or if you just find value and you're like, dude, you know what? I want to be awesome, so I'm going to have Jersey as my rep, so do that. Also, we're nerds about window cleaning. It's what we do. I'm such a nerd that I actually own the American Window Cleaner magazine. And yes, it's a paper magazine, a real magazine. If you're watching this on YouTube, I always show you a picture of what it looks like inside. Phenomenal. This magazine is so great. It's literally every month to your door with a full custom sticker sheet with just everything like window cleaning. It's just all window cleaning. Sweet products, cool reviews, awesome articles, great pictures, and it's 69 bucks a year. So go to awcmag.com, literally do it, and you will be um, the uh, top tier nerd like me. So thank you. Anyway, shameless plug done. By the way, I have to do the shameless plug because it works. Like I get every single week, somebody is like jumping on, like, all right, I'm ready. I want you to put my order, and it's so phenomenal because it's how I make my money. Literally, like the magazine, of course, kind of not a money generating thing. We got a great team; everybody's awesome for it. It's an amazing project, but putting in orders is like how I live and how I can afford all my name brand things. And usually, I'm wearing like a free Costco shirt, but this one's Adidas, so things are good. I don't have to shop at Costco anymore. Actually, I still do. Anyway. All right, so we talked about all these little tips and tricks already. Um, and I got another one because I get this, again, being a rep, I talk to hundreds of window cleaners a week, hundreds. I mean, literally my stats of like how much stuff I do it would blow you away. People are like, oh, you never answer your phone. Yesterday, I had uh, 36 phone calls in one day. I was on the phone with 36 different, like, that that's a lot. I'm always on the phone. That's why we do so much through text, right? But people are always like, okay, I got to get behind a window or I got to get behind a door or something. Like, do you have something that's like super small? And I'll tell you, no, you don't even need that, right? So if you have two panes of glass, you're super close and you're like, how do I get in there? All you do, pop the quick release in your channel, take the handle off. And now you have that channel. You don't have to have it on a handle. If you hold it at relatively the right angle you can stick the channel down there and do a pull and you're going to do what you did with a handle now it takes a little bit to kind of get used to but we do that for underneath we do that for behind coolers things like that we'll always do that it's a great great thing you can even take your handle loosen it move it all the way to the one side and now you got like this super long side you could drop it down right in the same sense is that could also be a quick extension. So if I'm doing a window and I got to get to the detailing 
and I can't really quite re I can take that channel, move it to the side, put my towel on the channel, and use the channel as a little extension. Um, a lot of really good ways to do that, and you don't need a specialty tool for that when you can make the tools you have actually work. So really pretty cool. Um, that one's hard to visualize sometimes, but you kind of get it. If you don't, ask. Ask a question. I'll help you out. Uh, another one is Magic Erasers. Magic Erasers is a really good tool to have if you're doing new construction cleans. Uh, if you're doing anything with sticker removal, adhesive, things like that, the Magic Eraser is like basically a sponge with like pumice powder in it or something kind of along those lines. It's a little abrasive. Once that's wet, it really gets that kind of sticker, adhesive, silicone, that kind of thing off the window. And they're super cheap. They like break down, you throw them away. They're cheap. So Magic Eraser and New Construction is really, really good. I still like Steel Wool for everything else, but New Construction, it's really good to have a Magic Eraser too. Uh, if you're not using it, use it. That does not scratch glass. Magic Eraser also. Now it's not as abrasive as like a Steel Wool, so I don't use it on everything. But for silicone, I do. So something cool to think about there. Um, and I do a thing that I wanted to bring up. And I actually left it off this list of nine things in the beginning because I couldn't really figure out how to explain it. But I'm going to explain it to you anyway. And if you don't get it, again, this is a video also, but I'll do it. Every one of our guys is taught the exact same way. When you're done cleaning the window, don't look straight on it like you're normally like, okay, cool, looks good, and move on. What we do is what we call the bob and weave. Like it literally, you go all the way to the left and you're looking to the right frame. And you go all the way to the right and you're still looking, right? So as you move, remember, we're looking at something floating. If there's a piece of debris on glass, it's literally floating because you can't see the glass, right? But if you're looking right at it, it can blend into the background. But if you go with different angles, you're moving the, the piece on the glass, but you're also getting different lights and different backgrounds. So we do a bob and weave. We do one left, one right. You know, we're going back and forth to try to see if anything's moving. And that's how you can see if there's really something on the glass. If you've ever missed something, and again, you know I'm a proponent of like, you know, clean enough for the customer to think it's clean is clean. So I'm not talking about going all the way in and doing it, but a quick bob and weave, you can see if there's a big smear. Because there's been a lot of times you do a whole window, and as soon as you do that, you're like, oh my gosh, there's like a thumb-sized something in the middle, and I didn't even see it because behind it through the window was the garage or whatever. And that background kind of matched up. So do a bob and weave side to side and you're going to see a lot more kind of debris on the glass. You may have to wipe it. You may have to take it. You may have to just, even if it's like a little smear, like where you turn, sometimes you can leave a little triangle if you didn't quite get the uh, angles right. Pop your steel wool out. One, two, just buff it like that. Hit it with a huck and bob a weave. Good. Move on to the next one. Super, super easy. And if you teach your guys to do this, it looks a little ridiculous when you're tra training them, but they will catch more mistakes and they will get your callbacks down to almost zero. I mean, callbacks, I sold my company, but I, it was years since we had a callback. Now, I think that also has to do with the staff and letting them know, and hey, if you see anything, spot streaks or smears in any light, please let us know. Like we put it out there that we're not, we want to come back, right? But if people like you, uh, you've already told them, hey, if you do see this, let me know. You've done the side to side, so they're not finding. If they do find something, I think sometimes people are like, you know, I saw something, I just did it with a little towel, it wasn't a big deal. I didn't want to call you guys all the way back, right? If you put it out there that way, then they want to kind of help you out too. And they have kind of a connection with you. So anyway, Bob and Weave, it looks ridiculous, but works really, really, really well. And the last tip that I want to say is actually has to do with water fed. But one of the most common maintenance things for water fed poles, like if you own a pole, you got to tighten clamps. Right, you gotta go over it, you gotta wipe everything down monthly. That's just a thing, just do it, right? You got a thousand dollar pole, wipe the thing down, you're not gonna get them seized up, you're not gonna get anything out. But one thing is, is that in a brush, new, used, you've had the brush a year, you've had it a month, 
you will get a clogged jet. One jet won't work the same. Uh, one jet won't have any water. One jet kind of just trickles out. The other one sprays. And you're like, oh, these jets are broken. Not at all. That is an absolutely incredibly common thing. And what it is is there's just some debris, some debris in the jet. It's super simple. When you're dragging hoses and packing up, sometimes it gets on the little like quick connects. And as you put them, it push, pushes it through. People are like, oh, no, I'm running it on the system. There's thousands of other times you get stuff there. Even you know on the window, if you're cleaning, sometimes stuff can get pushed back into the wedge. In there, right? There's lots of ways it can happen. And it is a super, super easy fix. And I'm going to give you the fix. If one of your jets ever doesn't work right, all you have to do is we pop the T off the back because that's the easiest thing, right? So each jet has a hose that comes off into a T. Just take the T off. So now you have a little piece of hose. Take a paper clip, which every one of our trucks has a bunch of paper clips on them. Straighten it out. Stick it through the face. Kind of go around, do a little, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then take some water or compressed air if you're in the shop and just blow it through the face of the jet. We're trying to dislodge and push anything out. That's why we took the T off because now it can clean that thing out. That's it. Put the T back on. You're up and running. Literally, you can do this within 30 seconds on a job and you're back to going. I can't tell you how many people have said, oh my gosh, my jet's not working. I need a new brush. Or is this under warranty? It's like, yeah, I mean, absolutely there's a warranty, but that's not. That's a simple maintenance thing. No, the brush, brush is broken. No, no, that's literally not. I will say I've had probably maybe two brushes, maybe three. I mean, this is, I've we've been water feeding for 15 plus years, and every truck, every crew had water fed. So we went through a lot of brushes. I've had maybe two in the entire time that had something that we could not dislodge. And that ends up being really weird shaped things that I couldn't poke through. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm at that point. Let's get another brush. I, whatever. It's a cost of business. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. But every other time, and this is like weekly one of the trucks is doing this. Dislodging that, gets it back out, blowing the water through, clears the line. You're back up and running and you're perfect. It's that simple. I, there's not really, yeah, you could get manufactured, like uh, debris from manufacturing in there, I guess. Super uncommon. Very, very rare. Because a jet is not bird, it's tooled. So if that makes sense, there's not burrs that are in the jet. They would be out of, anyway, it's super rare. It's uh, almost as rare as getting air quotes, bad resin. Um, it's just very, very uncommon to kind of get that. So nice to have. And a paperclip is incredibly cheap. As far as tools go, it's going to be one of the cheapest ones you have in your arsenal. And I'm telling you, you'll use it all the time. So simple paperclip. Or you can also get, uh, they're called, um, <clears throat> some people call them O-ring picks. But they're like those pick sets that the dentists use, you know, scrape your teeth and ruin your day. Those are nice to have too. Uh, they don't go in as much as a paper clip, which paper clips again are super cheap. Um, but both of those can kind of help for that. So you're going to run into it. Why not prepare for it? And if you're not in water fed, why the heck not? You should be. Um, by the way, next week is the huge convention. Uh, if you're watching this when it comes out, of course, uh, I'll be there. Uh, the whole crew will be there. We're actually going to do some live stuff from the show also. If you're there at the show and you're listening to me right now, please say what's up. Scream it. Be like, Jersey! I want to be the most obnoxiously received person there. If you see me, make a big deal and be like, yo, what's up, man? Uh, also, Steve doesn't watch these. So if you see Steve with me, because... We're like side by side the entire time at pretty much everything. I mean, you'll see us together at dinners to whatever. It's just we kind of hang out a ton. If you see him, do this. And this is my favor to you. Scream my, say my, yeah, Jersey, what's up, man? Oh, make that awesomely big deal. And then I'll probably introduce you to Steve. Or if you see Steve, just be like, oh, hey, and, and who are you? Just do that. It's just a little, it's a little, a little game we play that uh, I quite enjoy. So make my day. Pretend not to know Steve, um, and uh, yeah, 
That's that's all I ask. The second thing I ask is not muting my phone. But the second thing I ask is letting me put your orders in. Again, shameless plug, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. Uh, I make millions of pennies um, a year. Probably not that much. I'm not going to do uh, the, um, the math on that. But that's all putting in your orders. Uh, every time I place an order, I get credit for it. And it costs you nothing extra. Nothing extra. And I can help you with a lot of things. So let me know. My number. Get ready. I'm going to give you my number again if you don't have it saved. But it's 862-312-2026. Text me, yo, Jersey, everything's in my car. Or even if you don't put it in your cart, just be like, yo, Jersey, I need this, 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 and this. Sweet. Ah, makes my day. Please uh, do that. Help me out. Um, You know, let me, you know, live my lavish lifestyle. And if you haven't yet, get yourself a subscription to the AWC magazine. It's American Window Cleaner magazine. It's phenomenal. It's so good. It's so good. Just go check it out. It's awcmag.com forward slash sub. 69 bucks, which you have, bro. You have that. Uh, Get a subscription because that would be amazing. I want every window cleaner to have a subscription to the magazine. So go and do that. Again, if you're at the huge convention, say what's up. If you're just there in general, let me be a rep. And uh, until next week, go out there. Try some of these tips because they're really good. And uh, more importantly, go out there and be happy.